these two incredible Shashi and uh, Malika's performance, I feel like I feel like wanting to be a bit like the Chinese artist I Y Y, who held his Ming vase and dropped it and smashed it so that everybody would look at him and uh, sort of shook the whole of the world, art world. Um, I wish I could do something like that. They're going to be hard performances to beat or match up to. Uh, I, uh, I wear two hats. I'm a film editor and I am now as uh, was introduced the artistic director of the International Film Festival of Kerala annual event which I think everybody in Toronto knows. As the as a film editor, uh, uh, it's uh, my role is a very kind of self effaced mine is a fairly self effacing role. I'm sure if I ask you all to name two film editors, uh, nobody will know. And in fact we all think that if you can even see the editing in a film, it's probably not a well edited. Yeah, so I'd first like to talk about uh, my role as a film editor and since we are in Trivandrum and uh, uh, I'd like to talk about how I arrived in Trivandrum and my experiences not only as a film editor but as a person who came here to start working. Uh, I grew up in Delhi and uh, about 1982 I decided to come and live in Trivandrum and uh, while I was studying at the Film Institute we heard of this fantastic new setup that has been built by the government of Kerala for the encouragement of cinema, for the encouragement of the arts and so on and so forth. So I was really excited. I thought how nice to be able to go and work there and come. So I, uh, in 82, I got a film to edit. It was my first film. I was very young. I'm not talking about 1950 or 60. I'm talking about 1982. I want you all to remember. Not so far away, but still far away. Uh, there's a reason I want you to remember. It's because uh, I came to the studio and it was, it was wonderful. It was such a beautiful place and so on. And I didn't know the language then. I didn't know Malayalam at all then. And uh, I began to, I mean, I, I went into the editing room. At about one o'clock, I thought, yeah, now is the time for a break. And I went and looked and there wasn't a loom for women in the editing room. Now this was state of the art studio in 1982 and not in 1950, but there was a mindset I immediately encountered. No women were supposed to be coming into that editing room. They didn't even envisage that women would probably want to work here. So this was the actually the start of my uh, my career in Trivandrum and uh, I've sort of encountered this continuously and it's important because uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I, I've, I've worked with wonderful directors, we've worked on themes that are absolutely wonderful etc. But what I have felt all along is the lack of a uh, the presence or the sound of women, not in terms of physical sound, but in terms of actually hearing, hearing women's voices, hearing women uh, discuss things, putting in an opinion that perhaps is different. And this has continued even today. We are talking now in 2012. There are probably three or four women working in Malayalam cinema behind the scenes. I mean, of course, there are lovely actresses and the singers and so on. But women who are actually, uh, you know, we can count directors literally on our fingertips. We can count two, three assistant directors. And, uh, and I think this is, in fact, also shaping the way our films are. We have a whole new wave of cinema today. And I'm really proud and happy and a lot of these youngsters are people we've all trained and worked with. But I do see in that cinema also that there is only a superficial understanding of, of women, of women's issues, of, 
of the whole nature of just being a woman in society. So this is one mindset and this mindset continues till today. I just wanted to say that. I'll tie up this with something else that I'll talk about later. Uh, after editing for many years, etc., I uh, got the opportunity to work as the artistic director of the International Film Festival of Kerala. Now, uh, this is a very, very important event as far as I see it because if you see uh, there are about 150 films released in Kerala over a year out of which 80 are Malayalam films, there are a few Hollywood films, there are a few Bollywood films and some Tamil films. So the whole world of cinema is, as far as the public space is concerned, is America, Bombay, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. So this is, this is a very disturbing notion that you know the, that the whole the whole space is occupied only by this kind of films and therefore this kind of ideas and therefore this kind of exposure to audiences. So uh, for me the film festival was an important space which was actually patronized by the government of Kerala which is the most important thing. We are not talking about public, uh, private sponsorship, market, this, that. But here was a government that said, yeah, we have to create this space and this is a public space for people to come and know cinema and uh, therefore there are films, we show about 180 films. You can come and see a film from Africa, you can come and see a film from Cuba, you can come and see a film from wherever you want, there are 180 films. And over the week, you pay literally peanuts and you come and watch these films. And this has been uh, very gratifying, it's been very... But I would now like to talk about certain mindsets that have crept into this, this space into this film festival space which are very worrying to me and I think to many people who are looking at uh, Kerala sociologically that um, you know from in the 80s uh, people were still going to cinema, people were still taking their families and going to the theatre etc. And then in the 90s that came down a lot and uh, people were sitting at home and sitting at you know, sitting in their little videos, etc., and watching. So it became a very private and, uh, you know, individual activity. When uh, the film festival space opened up in about, at, uh, around 1998, I think what happened is people forgot, people have uh, almost, there is a collective. Uh, uh, memory loss about uh, the etiquette of public space. I'm not talking only about behavioral etiquette, I'm just, I'm also talking about uh, intellectual etiquette, I'm talking about how, uh, how you deal with being in a public space where we are all uh, sharing a common experience. The first thing I noticed is it's become very consumption oriented. Everybody wants to come to the film fest. Everybody wants to be a part of the film fest. Everybody wants to see these films. But there's no, there's no responsibility. There is no, uh, uh, there is no reflection. I find there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of the self, and not the fact that you're in fact seeing some of the greatest works of art from all over the world and instead of it becoming a humbling experience what I'm finding a lot is it's it's becoming a very self-righteous experience and and this shows in many many ways that we notice at the film festival one is complete lack of respect in terms of you know you have your cell phones on through the films nobody's bothered we have thousand announcements, nowhere in the world but at the Kerala Film Festival will you have phones ringing 
through through the films and and you know this is very disturbing i think uh, with the uh, popularization and the whole democratization of the media everybody thinks they have a have a right a slice over or a, a right of ownership over and you can do what you want and this also reflects in the kind of um, uh, opinion generated through the film festival you have billions of blogs you have billions of people talking about film but it's all with this self righteous i mean you know blogging is a wonderful thing i'm sure but there is no there is no sense of um history critique uh, um, any sense of wanting to evaluate or understand that it is a subjective judgment that all looking at all art is subjective and therefore you your word is not the end word so these are sort of mindsets that have that are creeping in because of certain uh, i think certain lack of responsibility lack of uh, or a sense of ownership that everybody thinks now they have over everything and over the media because you consume it you know you think you can buy it and you can eat it and it's yours so this is a mindset that i'm seeing which is very uh, in fact very frightening because you know at one level everybody comes to the kerala film festival saying have you seen this wonderful audience but then they go into and then there are these lines of people waiting to come into the film but when they come into the film the the turn and and turn and and this is going on all through the film you know so um i think i think there's this is a moment to reflect we are 15 years down the line this festival is owned by everybody it belongs to the people and i think as organizers uh, we try to do our bit in terms of uh, preserving this space making it as uh, uh, vibrant as live as possible but i think now uh, trivandrum and uh, kerala itself has to uh, sort of take responsibility and uh, make this a much more importantly intellectual exercise and now i come into another mindset which is the whole sense of the intellectual now intellectual is a very dirty word today she is an intellectual and, and i cannot understand that because when you use your mind you are an intellectual and i cannot believe that anybody uh things that the lack uh, you know using your mind is a uh, thing to be frowned on or uh, disdained so i think uh, the film festival is an intellectual space it's a space and the uh, intellect does not mean that you don't enjoy yourself intellect comes with humor intellect comes with love intellect comes with you know it's everything that defines you as being human and therefore this space should be treated like that it's not only about yourself it's about everybody else it's about what uh, is offered to you by uh, by the state actually um last year now just another uh, point last year we had about uh, 9000 delegates that then did the 9800 and something delegates and i just looked at the figures before i came here 9800 and 800 delegates out of which we had 1042 women this is in a state where uh, the ratio male female ratio is in fact like any western country skewed in favor of the female when they have 1084 females to 1000 men but at the film festival we don't even have a ratio of 1 is to 9 now that is another scary mindset and i think this uh, sort of ties up with what i've said earlier about cinema about cinema becoming such a strongly male and patriarchal space i'm um, 
I'm really sorry to say this, but girls who, you know, ladies or women who come to work in cinema or, I mean, from time immemorial, always women are considered bad if they're in any form of the art. But now it is even extended to the public space where women who come to the film festival, in fact, are often hounded by the media four years ago, very, very bad reports about girls who were at the film festival. Uh, there were very, very, even last year we've had incidences where, uh, you know, girls who do uh, sort of pick up the courage to come and actually want to watch films uh, feel very threatened by this huge male presence. In fact, um, there's a very famous uh, Brazilian filmmaker who came and he looked at this audience and said, are there no women in this state? Are there no women at all? Is this, he in fact said, is this a homosexual state? <laughs> because there were so many men and there were just no women at all. So, I think these are, these are the mindsets we are up against. 21st century, um, all very well. We've got fantastic literacy, we've got fantastic uh, health indices, we've got a beautiful techno park. But somewhere there is something not so right with our mindsets. I think uh, it's time that we all sort of reflected a little. I must say, I, I enjoy it, I, I love the film festival, I, I, think, I think we have to all fight to keep it the way it is and uh, as it is. But I also think that we have to reflect and uh, make it even better than it is. Thank you.